All right, so I thought I'd take some time today to talk to you about cultural animation. Now, if you actually Google it up, you'll be taken to cultureanimation.com, which is actually a Polish um, website, uh, specifically the Institute of Polish Culture at Warsaw University. And they provide a training framework for the, the sociological side of uh, cultural animation. And uh, they define it as uh, in, well, involving young artists, curators, anthropologists, writers, filmmakers, storytellers, musicians, actors, or leaders of any common cultural activities. Um, and their goal is to prepare participants for an active role in culture, uh, defined as a space of self-realization, expression, and realization of values. Um, in other words, a living space which is undergoing constant transformation. Now, when I talk about cultural animation, I'm including the computer graphics side because when most people hear the word animation, they're thinking Disney, Pixar, that sort of stuff, um, which isn't wrong, but I've always had this want or desire to unite things, you know, to bring things together. So when I, when I was creating indigenous stories uh, through animation, you know, I stumbled upon the term cultural animation. Now, I thought I was being smart, and I thought I was the only person who had, you know, coined the term cultural animation until I found, you know, the actual um, phrase or, or term used. Um, and, you know, I, I dug in even deeper, and I learned that the cultural theorist, um, now, I, I really don't know how to say his name, but I'm going to learn later, um, but it's Zegors Godlewski. <laughs> And I'll put that in for you all to see how that's spelled. Uh, but he defines, uh, he's a cultural theorist that defines the practice of animation as identification, activa activation, uh, dynamization um, of particular spheres of cultural experience. And the heart of cultural animation essentially is the action stage, right? It's the activism. And for many years, the computer graphics animation has been quite a passive experience for most people um, but now you know you are seeing its principles being used in games and interactive models and that sort of stuff um, but I think we can take it one step further and that's what I plan to do uh, with the the culture animations from a computer graphics side um, and I specifically look at indigenous cultures their stories their myths their legends and use animation to tell those stories to help inspire, engage, um, connect and activate um, or awaken something inside people to that indigenous spirit. Because I believe that everybody does have an indigenous spirit because we, you know, our ancestors were all native to some place uh, in the world. And I think that's a very important thing to look deeply into, right? We all have it a part of us. And I think it's, it's, it's important for us to start tapping into that if you haven't done so already. Uh, and, and that way you'll be able to um, get more action out of, out of yourself. You know, these days I've found that most of my generation and even younger generations, um, our parents, our grandparents, our ancestors, a lot of them did strive to leave us something um, to leave us or give us the opportunity to do something with our lives. So the onus is on us to to do something about that, to take responsibility. Now, you know, it's, it's difficult to be in a state of responsibility all the time because, you know, then you can start feeling like the weight's on your shoulders, uh, the world of, the weight of the world is on your shoulders and um, it can get, it can get difficult but, um, if you tap into the spirit of responsibility as well, it helps you find that purpose. And I think traditionally the way they, uh, the indigenous uh, would usually try to instill that sense of responsibility is by making us do things that we don't want to do, right? Um, if you came from a religious background, you know, or a Christian background, you'd be like, you know, go to church every Sunday even if you don't want to, right? Now, the extreme side of that is, you know, that, that child could then grow up and be like, you know, I never want to go to church again because I hated doing something that I didn't want to do. But in life, sometimes the, the discipline, right, in, in forcing yourself to do things that you may not particularly want to do, 
but you know may have some benefit for you in the long term is one that is certainly overlooked and not everybody uh, is able to, to do that so I hope I haven't digressed too much but relating it back to um, what I define cultural animation as which is the use of computer graphics um, and technology to be able to activate, inspire, engage, and awaken the indigenous spirit in all of us by highlighting and sharing indigenous stories. And uh, I'm hoping that with this, people will start to explore their own indigenous cultures, right? Because once you understand how indigenous people and their cultures and their stories relate to you, then maybe humanity will have be able to instill hope again and faith and trust um, to do what's necessary to bring back our earth, our planet to a state of harmony, to a state of peace. And remember, balance means accepting both sides. So when if you're the type of peacemaker looking at uh, you know, uh, completely excluding the other, then you exclude yourself because you cannot be yourself without the other. All right. So with that, I hope that's helped you to understand how I am redefining culture animation. Uh, like with things in this world, uh, one term, one phrase, um, one word can have different meanings in different contexts. So just remember when I'm talking about culture animation, that is relating to the animations in computer graphics and creating activism on a social level and to create social change and transformation.